Thank you, guys. Uh, it's a really pleasure to be here for the second time here, and I really love this hall. It's so easy to fall asleep here because of this coziness and so on. So I'll try to keep pace and, uh, yeah, to be fast. Uh, we don't have that much time as well. So do we still need a servers? It's a, a topic of a presentation. Uh, my name is uh, Dennis Rodin, as you know, and uh, you can reach me at Pixels Commander. I work in Liberty Global, and it's also known as Zigo, and we develop set-top boxes. So why we were interested in P2P? Uh, the reason was that once we had an idea. Okay, if we see it, video content uh, for TV boxes, not from our server, but from your neighbor's box to you, it will save us some money because we don't need that much serv servers and uh, uh, broadcasting channel and so on. So, yeah, that was our interest. But then we went further. Why not seed everything with that? Why not seed everything with P2P and make the whole world P2P? So the question is, do we still need servers? It's very nice to speak about this on Java conferences when everybody controls servers and once you say to them, hey, do we still need you or not? Um, uh, yeah, so to understand do we still need servers, uh, let's go retrospective and understand to understand how responsibilities and uh, relationships between server and client were changing with time. Uh, in the beginning, there was nothing. Then God created a server and client and said, server responsible for everything and client just display some markup. It's... Uh, yeah, a bit insulting for client, but it was like that. So on the second day, God said, okay, let's go with SPA paradigm. And uh, SPA means that client responsible for view layer. And then people realized, okay, we are losing some time here because if we try to build SPA and present it as SPA completely, we need to do some additional steps be before presenting a uh, markup and uh, design to to user. Because first we need to get HTML, CSS, JavaScript. Then we need to parse and initialize JS applications. Then uh, make a call to server. Then render content. So SPA became way slower than server rendering. Whoa! It's a uh, uh, regression. So on the third day, God created isomorphies. Uh, it's, yeah, there was a lot of application built with JavaScript. So the isomorphism, which is basically reusing of server and client code, as uh, was JavaScript, as, uh, obviously. And uh, isomorphic is cool because it's the power of server-side rendering and uh, single-page application combined. And server-side rendering means faster application delivery. And it means search engine optimization, which is sometimes really crucial. Um, single page application still provides nice and snappy uh, user experience and responsivity. So isomorphic tooling, uh, many of you, you know that there are things called React and uh, Express. It, if React is uh, iffy, you can use something different, but Express is a must have if you do isomorphic and it's must have if you do some server side stuff with uh, web application with uh, JavaScript. Almost, almost must have, but yeah, most of people use it. So let's sum up. On the first day, server is everything. Second day, uh, SPA uh, practice established. So yeah, some responsibilities move to client. And on the third day, isomorphism means that server and client have almost equal rights. Nice. So we have only one thing left. Server can't deliver application to the rest. So what is going to happen on the fourth day, we assumed. And on the fourth day, God created WebRTC and said, every browser can deliver content to the rest by passing server. So do something with that. And uh, we tried, we tried hard, and we did. Uh, what is WebRTC? So how many people used WebRTC? Not that many. It's, it's amazingly hard to use, to be honest. So when I started, I saw, oh, it's going to be like Canvas, or maybe like WebGL I was, I was talking about last year. So WebGL is really challenging. If you want to start with WebGL, you need to, you need to teach a new language, and yeah, it creates some challenge. But for WebRTC, I found it even more complicated. So if you want to use it, uh, you need to, to, to know a few concepts. And still, uh, the whole process of establishing connection is pretty weird. Uh, but yeah, let's go with what is peer-to-peer. Peer-to-peer. 
let's assume we have Anna. Anna is some user living on the same block with Boris. And Anna and Boris want to use the same application to communicate each other, to send some information to each other. They live on the same block. And here is a server in San Francisco somewhere, or Berlin. Uh, and, and, and to exchange some information, they need to go to say, hey, server, please send this information to Boris and send back to Anna. And it, it means that round trip is going to be a few thousand or many thousands kilometers longer. P2P means that they can exchange information directly by passing the server. So, as you see, it's, it's a big improvement. Uh, yeah, here in our tri triangle is pretty, pretty small in terms of uh, foundation, but yeah, it could be really different in real life. It means like a server is uh, on, the, on the neighbor's blog, but no, actually, usually it's uh, more distance. So how it works uh, under the hood, uh, there are two clients and you have some web application server. They can't reach each other uh, directly. They need a server to exchange ICE uh, candidate package, which says each client how to reach each other through all nets and routing they have between each other. So yeah, it's a pretty complicated thing. And uh, you know, if you want to dive into that, it will take a few chapter of a good book, like uh, uh, high performance networking of Ilya Grigoruk is a nice one. And uh, if you try to dive into WebRTC and how it works, it will take a few hours, a few days. Uh, but yeah, what it means for us practically, uh, as, as, as mobile phone gap developers. So WebRTC is on Firefox, Chrome and Android natively in browsers, Android 5. Lee. Uh, Edge supports ORTC. ORTC is a successor. At least there is intent to make it a successor. Now it's only on, on Internet Explorer. So um, yeah, they, they, there is a lot of promotion on that. Uh, there is a on the rest, for the rest of platforms, there is a polyfill, and it's called RTC Everywhere. It's really awesome. Uh, there is a plugin for the Flash plugin, some uh, standalone plugin for Safari and uh, Internet Explorer uh, 9 and, and uh, upper. And uh, for Cordova, there is a Cordova iOS RTC, Cordova Android. Uh, for uh, Android, you, you, can vol you can use Crosswall because it's basically the latest um, uh, Chrome browser. And uh, yeah, so basically in PhoneGap, you can use a WebRTC in the same way you use in web without uh, um, having a pain of, uh, yeah, do my browser support it or not. So yeah, there is a way to use it. Um, so going back to first day. So if we imagine that browsers can deliver app to the rest, giving them more power. Uh, yeah, as, as I said, so there are some powers in, in making a P2P, like uh, reduce distances to get application from your neighbor or from guys sitting near you. Like uh, currently, we, we, we can assume that someone has some application and loading not from server in uh, San Francisco, but fro from someone in this hall. So uh, <coughs> traditional app distribution means that every client is going to make a call to server once <coughs> and get a package. And if we do it in P2P, Every continent, continent will get it once, and then it's going to be seated from the closest seat. And yeah, so we save some time on, on uh, distance. Also, we can save some time on uh, network, like by using uh, company network. So usually company networks are uh, fiber optic now, and uh, outside is like 10 Mbit internet in average in Europe. So yeah, the difference could be remarkable between using an internal network, like once application gets into a company uh, network, then it's been seeded and been distributed inside of a network by fiber optic. Uh, how to enable browser to seed your app peer to peer? So uh, your app should be packaged in the way to, to, you, to your JavaScript package, you add some viral addition which enables browser of your user to see it further. So essentially, browsers are getting infected by apps. So once someone got an uh, app open in, app in, 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 a, in a browser tab, it's been seeded from this tab, not from a uh, server anymore. So uh, every next client gets from server a scene client, which is 
small script which says, hey, server, where is the closest guy to me who has this app? And uh, server connects scene client to uh, uh, closest uh, guy with varal addition and application. And guy with varal addition sends uh, application back to scene client. So uh, yeah, there is some scheme. If you're interested, you can go to GitHub to var viral JS repository and uh, follow into details. So yeah, basically users receive app from browser tabs uh, of uh, people who already open it. Uh, yeah. So clients got more rights. And now the most boring part, I would, I would say you, and I, I would uh, uh, yeah, notice that uh, it's going to be boring. It's, it's a mess and uh, it's something about performance. After that, it's going to be demo. And if you have your laptop with you, it's better to prepare a laptop. Or if you have Android 5, it's uh, uh, fine as well. So yeah, let's do some mass, mass first. Um, yeah, let's assume that there are some variables like uh, application size, variable addition size, scene client size, internet speed, internet company network speed. So in this case, uh, um, normal transfer means just all application size we divide by uh, size of internet, or uh, in case of P2P, uh, we uh, sum uh, application size and relation addition size and uh, divided by the speed of internal network for fiber optic and uh, uh, scene client size is only sync which is being uh, transferred through internet so yeah so basically our calculation says so if we transfer applications through fiber optics then after getting it into company network it gets a pretty an improvement and the difference is a uh, like one point half thousand uh, percent. So yeah, it's a uh, pretty uh, big uh, thing. And uh, let's go further and assume that we can improve. Uh, not only improve, but the bigger size of application is, and more valuable and more uh, beneficial is to see that we are P2P inside of a network. So the bigger size of a package, yeah, the uh, more benefit from a network speed. And let's assume that we decrease the size, it's really possible to decrease the size of uh, virial addition and uh, sin client. So uh, in this case, because currently it relies on sort pattern libraries, if we do just a simple P2P code, it's going to be s way smaller. So this one was 50 ki kilobytes, it's going to be 10. I'm sure it's, uh, it's possible to do. So the improvement could be uh, 7,500 percent. It's amazing. Is it realistic? No, it's not realistic. So uh, <laughs> not every user is peer-to-peer -peer because someone still needs to get the application from the server directly. So let's assume that Every fifth user gets application from the server. So like every every company you see the application to have five users and one first receive from uh, server and the rest receive from this user sitting in the same room or something like that. So it's going to be like minus 20%, 6,000% improvement. Is it realistic? No, uh, because handshake takes a lot. And here is the biggest trick of uh, why WebRTC is so complicated. So uh, WebRTC is ISET, means that uh, until establishing communication, uh, clients should find each other through ICE server. In the world without nets, in the world how it should be, where all network is transparent, the two computers can make established connection just directly, but it's impossible now. So to establish connections, they need to connect some public peer, get the closest route to each one, and then peer sends them information how to reach each other and connect them. Only after this procedure, they can talk to each other. And this basically makes all uh, concept of peer-to-peer -peer web application uh, distribution not that, not that cool as 6,000% improvement. So at least ICE adds uh, four round round time trips, and it means 400 milliseconds in average. So uh, improvement in average is going to be 400% if we, you see it to five people in the same company every time. So there is still so some uh, uh, still some benefits, but it's not that remarkable. And uh, all this procedure can take longer because there could be different routes how uh, people can reach each other on the internet, and it makes it, yeah, not that 
not, not, not a task where you can have the only one result, only one output. So it can take some time, even longer than four round time trips. So it's not that much predictable. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's not realistic. It could be lower sometimes, but it's, it's close to be. So uh, also there is a scene called web torrent. So why we didn't uh, try to web torrent by uh, there is all this viral addition, scene client and so on. So web torrents is uh, basically a fork of torrents protocol but implemented with uh, WebRTC. And uh, the difference with uh, uh, viral JS is that uh, web torrents needs to establish communication not only on WebRTC level but also on web torrents level. Yeah, it allows to seed uh, simultaneously from the fr from many in parallel from many uh, seats to, to, to get uh, some content but establishing connection is way slower. Uh, so demo time. If you have laptop Android 5, you are welcome. Pixelscommander.com at port 3000. Let me open it one more time. Yeah, you should log in with Facebook to give me your credentials. Oh, we have some people connecting. I see it's uh, refreshing. Don't see you got an app from me. There's a reason for that, or you d your browser doesn't support WebRTC, or no. only about images and. Uh Come on, more people. There are some interesting combination. For example, I got I got a app from myself, so it shows it's a uh, this graph. It shows that <laughs> some circles that uh, have a round dependency. Um, should I recall pixels commander that port three thousand? Okay, people. Sorry. Let's wrap up with that. So if you see, there are some people received an uh, application from me, but yeah, mostly people sit uh, with uh, uh, mobile devices and try to reach with uh, and basically God's application from server, express server. Uh, the nice thing about uh, viral JS, so to use it, you can use it just as a uh, middleware, Express.js middleware. So yeah, it's pretty simple, just one line, you add middleware to RLJS, or you have your P2P for free. If there is no P2P, it's still being seeded in the regular way, so you lose nothing. You just uh, put one line of code, and if it's possible to seed via peer-to-peer, -peer, it's going to be seed by peer-to-peer. -peer. If it's not possible, it's going to be seed just in regular way with HTTP and so on. So. Uh, summing up, yes, we still need a server to establish uh, communication between two clients. And uh, if you want to send some small packages, small applications, it doesn't make any sense. Uh, sending video or sending audio streams is definitely makes sense. Uh, sending some big files, yes. Um, if you have a big difference between internet speed in a company and uh, internal uh, network speed, it makes sense. Yeah, uh, this kind of things kind of conclusions and if you have any questions maybe we have some time and maybe not I'm not sure no time uh, sorry yeah <laughs> and uh, if someone is interested in, in, in uh, making something like react native but based on web components yeah. we may shot uh, thanks thank you that was great